So, come to Weston today on Stretton, and basically what we just want to show quickly is an approach of how to catch a nice net of these new stock fish what they've put in. A load of fish gone into Weston these last few months. Put F1s, tide, barbel, right good mixture of fish. This looks like actually one of the older fish. But we're having a good mixture today. We've had some of the older fish, we've had some new fish, we've had some hide. We've had a cracking day's fishing for say it's January. So get this one in. I'm just gonna talk through quickly the basic approach of how I like to go about it. Now that's not definitely not one of the new stock fish. One of the older F ones. Cracking fish them to catch in winter. But put that in the net but what we've come to target today basically is like we say the newer stock fish so most people sort of tend to associate when it's sort of new stock fish fishing with pellets now we have bought a few pellets today i've done a few fishery micro pellets but i don't really want to be fishing with these today because what i tend to find is if you, if you come to a venue that's recently been stocked and you fish with pellets, you tend to only catch the new stock fish. It seems like the older fish, your bigger eyed, your bigger F1s, your carp, prefer maggots this time of year. So if I can catch on maggots, I always like to fish that because it gives me the best of both worlds. But what's very important, I think, is still to have that fish meal element. These fish, them stock fish, they're reared on pellets and that's what they want to eat. So what I tend to do is I bring a bit of this, and that's just crushed expander. The Blake's Crust Expander, just a fine version, which I'm just feeding tiny little amounts of this today. Little small amounts. And that's just drawing some of the stock fish in my peg. And then I'm catching them on the maggots. So you tend to get a nice mixture. And like you just seen them, we've just had a bigger F1. We've had some of them and, and we've had the stock fish mixed in. So that's my preferred approach when it's this sort of type of fishing. So I'm just going to put my bait on the hook got a little small size 20 I'm just going to put double maggot on and I hook them both through the fin end just to leave even though I'm on a size 20 hook I'm just trying to leave as much hook exposed as possible like you can see just hook through the fin end and all I'm doing with me feeding the last couple of chucks I've just been putting maggots in because I've been getting quite a lot of bites but just to show you how I've kicked my peg off tiny little Preston pot like that and I'm just putting sort of 10 to a dozen maggots in and I'm just capping it with a bit of crushed expander. And I'm just putting it in nice and loose and just pressing it down. I've mixed that crushed expander really, really wet. Basically how I've mixed it is I've put a pint of crushed expander and a pint of water, so like a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's nice and wet and it's gonna sink down nice and quick. I'm not trying to create like a bed of ground bait on the bottom and get a lot of bait down. All I'm trying to do is get a bit of pellets and fish meal falling through the water to draw them fish in and then hopefully they'll follow the maggots down and I'll catch them on them. So ship out to my marker just aiming for this aerator nice little marker tends to be a good area this late fishing around the aerator quite a few fish tend to live there in the center of the bowl. We've actually got a leaf or something on the up that's one thing you could get a couple of times in winter, I'll just chip that quick, take it off. But yeah, on this lee, if you draw in this bowl, tend to sort of aim for the aerator, that's sort of the best sort of area where the fish just tend to hide, I think. I think with it being open water and that aerator being central to the bowl, I think it just holds a lot of fish. So. Shipped out to where I've fed. I'm going to flip my rig out to the side. And I'm just going to put my float on my marker like that. And I'm just going to hold tight to it. And try and slow the fall down as much as possible. Get a nice slow fall. And a lot of the fish are coming quite quickly after the rig's settled. So, still settling in now. Float seems to be sat. See that? I think that fish took that on the drop and just sat there within its mouth. I thought the float hadn't quite settled properly. And obviously, 
that fish has grabbed the bait and just sat there with it in its mouth. Now you see how quick the bites are coming. Fish are coming straight to that little bit of bait, straight to that ground bait. And you're getting bites really, really quickly. Makes for a lovely busy day in winter. Now you see that's one of the newer stock fish. So in two chops there I've had an old fish and the new stock fish. Now they're cracking little fish then. All sorts of different types of F1s in this lake now. We've got some of these which are the ghosty F1s. See there, he swallowed that down quite a bit there. He had that in his mouth for a while I think. He's going to get me to score you. But yeah, there's quite a lot of different F1s. So, got some of them which are the ghosty F1s. Pop them in the net. There's some blonde F1s. And there's also a lot of the original type of F1s that are in here now as well. So, you don't really know what you're going to hook next. And it is brilliant fishing in the winter. But, I think that illustrates what I'm already trying to say about fishing with maggots rather than just with pellets. I've managed to catch both the old fish and then I've gone back in and got one of the new fish. So, again, same again. A little pinch of maggots. Pinch of the crushed expander, just to cap it off. Press it in. Dead simple. But you can see how effective it can be to get you loads of bites. So... Line up with my marker again. Put the pot quite low to the water. Try and keep everything as tight as possible. Pick up the rig. Flick it out. Draw the rig on top of the bait. Hold it nice and tight. Keep the rig over the bait as it's falling. Wind's just blowing me a little bit there, but just try and hold on to my rig as best as possible. And then hopefully just as it settles up, you get a bite. You can see that illustrated absolutely perfect there. And that's the importance of like these carbon stem floats, nice light floats. Like this peg's quite a deep peg, probably six and a half foot where I'm fishing there today. And I'm just fishing even in a bit of wind today. I'm just fishing a 4 before 14 quite a high bulk, a couple of little number 10 droppers. And it just shows the bait to the fish nicely. And gets your bites really, really fast like that when the fish are in your peg. Now that looks like one of the bigger stockies. Some cracking stamp fish, like for new fish. Them are proper weight builders, them in the winter. It doesn't take you long to catch some good weights. The Winter League had just started this weekend and the weights on this lake were up to £90. There was a 70. I think there was, you know, loads of other backup weights, 40, 50 pound weights. Fishing's really good. But these sort of tips are what are going to maximise what you're catching. So I'm just going to run through the rig quickly now. I've got, starting with the elastic, pink hydro elastic. Now, that's quite soft, I'd say, for like open water lakes where there's quite a few big carp as well. But by fishing like this, it just allows me to catch everything from hide, stockies. And if I do hook a carp, I can take my time and I can still land it. Main line, 015 engage main line. Perfect main line in winter, that. Just nice and durable, but still light enough to let me float present nicely. I've got a number 8 back shot, halfway between the float and the pole tip. That's just a little num number 8 cube. What that does is, as you've seen when I'm laying my rig in, you get a nice slow fall. You can just hold everything nice and tight using your back shot. But also, it stops my rig blowing about in the wind. Gives me good presentation. The float, that's a Richie Wilson Maggie. Floats I use all the time for all my fishing. But I've got 4 by 14 today. Like I say, it's about 6.5 foot deep. So still relatively light for the depth of water. The important parts of this float, I've got a nice visible hollow tip, 1.5 mil. And I've got a nice carbon stem to let me follow my bait through the water. Ideal for maggots. And like I say, shot in pattern. It's just a bulk and two droppers. So it's got a bulk of number nines there. A few little number 13 trimmers. That's 18 inches from the hook. And I've just got two number 10 droppers spread below. And I've got five inch hook length. 
that's over 11 n gauge which is nice it's light enough to get bites but if i hook a car i won't get snapped on that and then i've got a size 20 f1 pellet up which is ideal for double maggot dead simple rig but just perfect for what i'm trying to achieve today fishing with maggots i'm going to go back out now see if we can get one more double maggot again on the hook few maggots, cap it off with my ground bait, press it in, and see if we can get another F1 or stocky fish. Again, just talk through all the little process again, line everything up. Feed it loads of the water, create a nice tight column of bait, flip me rig in, drop it in line with my marker, use my back shot to hold everything right over the spot, let everything settle up really, really slow. And again, hopefully we'll get a quick bite as the fish spot that maggot as it's falling. Ooh, just missed the bite then, just as it was about to settle up. So just lay it straight back in. Now this is one thing to be mindful of, if I do start missing a few bites, because obviously I'm feeding, I've fed ground bait now, three chucks on the row. Now if I'm starting to miss a few bites, what I'll do is I'll stop feeding ground bait. We tend to get a bit preoccupied on it, there's a bit, lot of bait getting built up in my peg. And if that's happening, I'll just feed maggots on their own. There's another fish now. I'll just cut it out and just feed maggots on their own. So what I might do next chuck now, before we finish, I might feed one more time with just maggots on their own and then what I'll do I'll have a couple of chucks like that and it tends to you'll catch a few and then it tends to fade away and then all I'll do is I'll just put a little bit more ground bait in to draw the fish back so you know don't just keep feeding the same have a look what bites you're getting see what the response is from the fish and just alter it to catch as quickly and as efficiently as possible